Hi, it's Melinda from Hope When There Was None. I am coming on to discuss a safety planning for the holidays. Now, this is going to be long. I was hoping to do a reel, but of course, I just kept going over the time allowed for the reel. So let's talk about safety planning. Now, this is a very hard thing for someone watching from the outside, seeing a loved one or friend that is suffering from abuse. And it can be really difficult just to stand by and just watch things unfold, maybe see bruises or hear the next day about uh, verbal things that happen between the victim and the abuser. And so this can be really difficult. So let's talk about this. Now, the victim, whether male or female, is on a roller coaster. And I'm going to say she a lot. So guys, don't get offended. So they, she might have these emotional crying one minute, this outburst of anger and so on and so on. So this person is on a roller coaster right now. Just be there for them. Be gentle. Just listen. You might be actually hearing the same thing over and over again. And this is normal. We all do this, even if we're not victims of, of abuse. So hi, Miss Joe. And so just be there. Keeping your her safe is very important. So what you can do is you can, let's say you can ask, okay, if they're traveling, you know they're traveling, where are you going? What stops are you making? Are you planning on staying at a hotel? Find out in advance. So if you haven't heard from the victim and let's say a week's gone by, and of course you're getting alarmed, this might be a good time for you to reach out to law enforcement, especially if you know the situation's really volatile. So knowing the path that they're on, when they're going to, let's say, Tennessee, and they're from Michigan, or they're in New York, and they're traveling to California, and you know they should be here by now, and they're not making those deadlines. So please try and get that itinerary in advance. And speaking of which, you might need to find a time that's convenient for the victim to uh, reach out, to talk, to do this safely, because you don't want to endanger her any more than you have to. And she might not be ready to leave yet. It's a very personal decision of when you make that that choice to leave. And you can have, and I've even said it myself to other victims, oh, you just need to leave. And I know that. I've heard the words tumble out of my mouth. But it's really a very personal thing. There comes a time when you have to hit rock bottom. You don't have to, but for many of us, we hit rock bottom. There's just something you break. It's almost like you break. And you know, I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. And you find yourself thinking, is this my life for the next year or two. In my case, I knew I would. I was a 39 at the time. I didn't believe I was going to make it to 40. So I did make that conscious choice. Okay, we need to go. So asking her to leave, she has to do it when she's ready. So just be patient, be calm, be there for her. Now consider giving away or keeping a stash of money in case she needs that in emergency. So let's say she does call you from that trip from out east to out west. All of a sudden she's stranded in Colorado. Well, maybe you can wire her some cash. So consider having a stash of money just in case there's emergencies. Now Joe says, I remember that with others but in all sense goes out of my head and talking to my youngest daughter, I just tell her to go, I know, girl, I, I, I did that myself with my daughter. So, yeah, I know. It's just we know in our guts and our guts help friends and other people. But sometimes knowing as a survivor, it can be hard. And, and I have to, like, pull the reins back. You know what this is going on with this person. You know what they're going through. But, you know, we've been out of it for so long. That it's just easy those words just tumble out <laughs> but knowing where she is keeping track keeping a small stash again maybe you need to wire something paypal something but have some cash available for here for her check out what shelters are available along her route okay if she needs to escape right away if possible there's a safe place if there's a hotel in the area um, we want to make sure that she again is safe Maybe if she is in your area, she can stay with you, but only if you think it's a safe situation. Maybe her partner doesn't know where you live. That might be a good idea. But, of course, you always worry that he's going to chase her or follow her or something like that. So there is, as long as there's some plans in advance, I think that should be fine. But, you know, it's a lot of planning and hoping she's not going to spill the beans because that can happen as well. And I know of many situations where a victim has made their escape, but they did confess to their abuser. So just be careful. Just be on alert. Now, know what important numbers are also available in her area. So let's say she's in that Colorado area. What city is she in? Can she tell you that information? So you then you can call law enforcement that's in Colorado. 
And again, just be on that standby. Sometimes if you are, uh, let's say you're, you're there in that moment where he is starting to get really pushy or shovey with her and you want to intervene, just be careful. Many bystanders are hurt and Good Samaritans are hurt or even killed when they get involved in a domestic violence situation. Now I'm saying not to get involved, but maybe call law enforcement, gauge and, and see how it is in that moment. And I know sometimes that adrenaline's going and we just want to jump in, but please just be mindful of your own safety too, okay? You don't need to get harmed in that exchange. So have, let's say it's a situation where she has to have um, a child exchange for visitation for the holidays, make sure that you're in a safe area, well at area during the day, okay? Now offer to babysit. Perhaps everything's going fine. It's still these holidays. She just left her abuser and she's still on this roller coaster. And that roller coaster of emotions can take up to a year, two, three, or even four, five. I, I was on that for at least five years after I left my abuser. It's just so, so... Um, so what's the word I'm looking for? So strong and, and just very hard in your face. You, you know, when you get in a fender bender or when something at work or you get into a situation and it's not domestic violence related, but it's in a situation where your adrenaline's going, that's how you feel almost all the time, even after you've left that abuser. Now, I don't want that to scare anybody from, from not leaving, from not taking those steps, but you are on a emotional roller coaster. So offer to babysit. Chances are she might have appointments. There might be uh, legal things, attorneys she needs to meet with. So consider dropping off, having her drop off the kids to you or you going over there. Maybe she might need some gift certificates for food or uh, maybe even a spa day, something special for her. Um, just give her that, that thought, uh, bag of groceries, make her a meal, something of that nature too. And Joe says that it becomes ingrained in you how to act in certain situations. Yes, yes, you do. And it's hard to break those patterns, which I'd like to get into another time. But yes, it is very hard. It really is. Because you fall back on those old, old patterns and sometimes they're very negative. So just offering to help out in those situations can be very very cool running errands for her maybe she hasn't had time or maybe she just doesn't feel like it there were there was a good two weeks i didn't want to get off the couch i really didn't because i was just so i was worried that he was following me and i, I was just so wrapped up in and consumed with worry with being hyper vigilant and so on and so on so maybe i was nervous too i know i was nervous i every time i saw a white van or a black pickup truck i was jumpy i mean you could touch my shoulder in I would jump, I, you know, I literally would jump. So maybe doing an errand that she's nervous to do or to go out and be alone with, please do so, or even give her some comfort by going with her. Now, if you're a victim, much of this applies as well. So keeping important numbers, those emergency numbers on your speed dial as well, 911 or even a coworker, that can help. Um, having a safe word, again, or phrase with that loved one so she or he knows, okay, I'm in a situation I can't get out of. And I just saw that hand movement. I cannot remember the hand movement now. I would say you put your thumb in and you, you cover cover your thumb, but you've seen it. I've posted it here. There uh, is a hand movement and I meant to copy that for myself, but there is a hand movement you can do. Hey, I'm in a situation that I need to leave, you know, something like that. Or there's the black dot too. There's many different ways to alert, safely alert somebody, but of course they have to know what that is. So sharing those videos, those safety things is very important too. So having that safe word, that short phrase, perhaps it is gingerbread and your friend or loved one knows you cannot stand gingerbread, but all of a sudden you're like, man, I am craving some gingerbread right now. That could be a safe word, especially with the holidays coming around. Now using a safety app, there's Aspire and there's many more. This can help alert your support team as well. Keep your phone charged. Please do that. Make your phone. Make sure your phone is charged. If you have a pay as you go phone, make sure that you have enough minutes on there and that it's always within reach. Keep money on hand as much as you can in case you need to leave in a hurry. If you have friends or family and you can spend the holidays with, or maybe you're attending a family function with them, you you want to have somebody that you is in your corner, is in your back. It has your back so it can make the situations or functions a little less scary if they know of the situation so see if there's someone you can trust 
okay? Sometimes in family units with abusers, sometimes those families are just as toxic as your abuser. They learned it from somewhere, someone, excuse me, sometimes. So just be careful, mindful of that. Try to minimize your time alone with your abuser. Now, when you're a victim of abuse, you become this if you want to call it, your intuition goes off. If you want to call it being a, a superhero, you are the superhero because you start to learn what makes this person tick, what sets this person off. So you start to learn the subtle signs and the little things that they do, the little habits. You know, maybe it's an eyebrow that raises. It could be a twitch in their cheek or they make this smile or hand gesture. You just start to know the behaviors that your abuser has so you start to learn how to recognize these patterns so it keeps you safe you're kind of de-escalating the situation perhaps calming yourself talking in a slow and calm voice but not condescending you don't want to be snarky you want to de-escalate the situation as best you can try not to get backed into a corner backed into a room with no windows and i'm talking about the bathroom in many cases Bathrooms are not created with windows, or they might have these little like teensy windows in there. So just be mindful of where you're going. I've been backed in a corner myself, so I know, you know, your instinct sometimes is, is to back away from harm. And I know I've gotten myself into many corners. So I'm just speaking as an, from experience to know your exits and your situation, wherever that is. Even if you're at a family member's home or friend's home, try to know where your exits are at all times. And again, use some de-escalation tips there. Talk calmly. Try not to get really close to them. Even though they might be coming close to you, try to back away. Keep some space in between you as well. And... Uh, find out in advance before going to a family gathering or friends or whatever it is if there's going to be alcohol, drugs, or even sports. Because some of our abusers, especially many of them, okay, are male. So that's why I'm saying these things here. Many of them are male. And so if there's alcohol, this might mean your abuser suddenly turns more angry as the day goes on, as the night goes on. If there's sports, it might be that they're addicted to sports. Or again, when we have these sporting events like the Super Bowl and so on, there is a higher chance of there being some sort of domestic violence situation. And this is worldwide, or you know, especially in the States, there is when we have these football or whatever else it is. So find out in, in advance, is someone gonna be smoking pot? Or do you know that Uncle Bill's there and Uncle Bill's notorious for snorting coke? You know, these things in advance would help. Maybe you can beg off, hey, you know, we don't need to go to that party. Maybe you don't want to, if you're able to. Again, a lot of this is de-escalation. A lot of this is also becoming a really good actor and if you've been a victim of abuse you do become a good actor with your emotions with showing a, a poker face with hiding hiding different things um on your face you you try not to show where you wear your emotions on your sleeve i don't know if you've ever heard that but you try just to be not numb not desensitized but you try not to show too much emotion at least I know that was in my case. Now, sharing with your neighbor or, again, family members can be hard for a victim to come out. There's shame, there's embarrassment, and so on. But you might be able to share if you feel comfortable with a neighbor and they feel comfortable. Maybe you can change out a bulb in your, in your home, your outside light. Perhaps you can have the Christmas lights on. And if there is a situation where emergency services are need to be called, you can flip the lights, the blinker, or you can put that special bulb on and tell that neighbor, hey, if you see my green bulb on my doorstep, please send help. Or maybe they feel confident enough, but again, please be careful, neighbor to knock on the door and say, hey, I forgot, I need some sugar, or you know, the gold, good old fashioned thing, I need a cup of milk, something like that, just to check on you as well. You can also tell your abuser if it, things are getting heated, I think I hear the door, or there's a car coming, you know, something, use whatever you can in order to de-escalate that abuser too in exchange, because you, you wanna keep yourself safe as best you can. And again, if you are meeting for a visitation exchange, Please do me a favor. Let's say you're separated now, but you need to meet that abuser for the holidays. Please do me a favor. Meet again. I'm going to say this again and again. Meet during the day. Meet under a street light if you have to, if it's in the evening. Meet at a police station. 
meet if you don't feel comfortable maybe there's not a near police station like me i'm rural so going out to a police station for an exchange might be a little difficult i would call the police in advance tell them hey this is melinda Kunz. This is what, then I was Melinda Allen, this is a situation that's going on. My husband and I are separated. I have a protective order or maybe it's just a volatile situation. I don't know what his actions are going to be like. Um, could you send a squad out or a police officer to watch the exchange? And when I did this, they were happy to do so. They would rather do that than to come to a crime scene. Okay, if you get the picture. They would stay, we'd meet at a restaurant and they would stay inside the diner. And I had another instance where they just stayed in the car and I parked in that area. They said, just be nonchalant, you know, don't be parking next to us. You don't want to give us away, but be nonchalant about it. So I would wait inside until he came and then I walked outside, you know, so I can introduce myself to the police officers. I made sure I got there in advance. And um, so I walked outside with the kids and said, okay, you know, let's do our exchange and so on and so on. The kids didn't say anything there. After a while, it just got to be common practice there for us. So, but again, they're happy to assist with these exchanges. They want what's best for you and the children and all that's involved. They want everyone to be safe. Now, I hope these help. I don't know what you've done yourself in order to keep yourself safe during the holidays. But again, it's just using that instinct, your guts, um, be aware, be, be vigilant, but also just to keep yourself safe and your kids safe and just to be, I just, I just know, you know, talking about this, it reminds me so much of my own, my own memories there. So just be safe. Um, it, I'd love to know what you've done down there. Joe, did you have anything like this situation? You know, throw me down in the comments, throw me down, throw that down in the comments. Hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to you later. This was really on my heart. I knew I needed to get this out and, um, yeah, this is very important, but please share. I'd appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Mwah. Bye.